Hi, this is Matt Bernstein with Skillhands.com. Welcome to the show. This is where we help hardworking people such as yourself to start a successful side business. New episodes come out every single Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Enjoy the show. Podcasting is an excellent way to connect with a focused audience in a very personal matter. That in and of itself is a fairly compelling reason to podcast. However, if you happen to need more convincing here, these are a few reasons why podcasting makes sense for anyone who has something to say. Podcasting is an inexpensive way to say what you want to say, when you want to say it, and to people who want to hear it. All you need is a microphone and a broadband internet connection, and you can have the power of a major media player. That's a lot of power. Podcasting also allows you to cut through all of the noise that exists on the internet and find an audience that is focused on you, your products, services, art, or opinions. Let's face it, you can't communicate your message to people who may need to hear what you have to say unless you can pinpoint who these people are. Podcasting allows you to accomplish this. Finally, while reading a blog is fine, hearing someone speak is even better. Podcasting allows you to add the warmth of a human voice to your message. Your voice becomes a way to build trust even faster with your target audience. The tools you need to record, distribute, and promote your podcast matter quite a bit. You want your podcast to sound as professional as possible so that when you have to say makes the greatest impression on your audience. In order to do that, you need to be the first informed about the hardware and software tools out there that will help you craft and distribute the best podcast you possibly can. So let's take a look at some of the tools of the trade, so to speak. Hardware. The most important tool in the podcaster's arsenal is his or her microphone. Without a professional quality microphone, there is no podcast. Earlier we said that you need to produce a podcast are a microphone and an internet connection. While that's essentially true, the type of microphone you use can greatly affect how your podcast is perceived and received. A low quality microphone will generally produce a low quality of sound, while a higher quality microphone will give your podcast that professional shine that you're looking for. Because of this, upgrading to a higher quality microphone is usually a smart move no matter what your budget is. One of the best all around microphones out there is named the Blue Yeti, which is what I'm using right now, so if you like the sound of it, go out and get one. It's about $100 on Amazon. The Yeti looks and feels like an old-fashioned studio desktop microphone, but comes packed with every modern feature you need to produce with Crystal Sound Quality Studio right in your home or office. It's a USB microphone, so it connects directly to your computer. This feature offers a tremendous advantage to podcasters who sometimes may be recording a broadcast solo and at other times might be interviewing one or more additional people. Another popular USB microphone choice for podcasters is the Audio-Technica AT2020. Similar to the design of the Blue Yeti, the AT2020 will give you pristine sound quality time after time designed to pick up sound from one direction only, which makes it perfect for a solo podcaster. This design also means that the AT2020 will isolate the chosen sound source while dampening extraneous sounds from other sources at the side and the rear. In other words, your voice will come across rich and clear without distracting background noises. In addition to a microphone, you might want to consider a couple of microphone accessories. One of the most important is a pop filter. As the name implies, a pop filter softens the audio pops and hisses, and can occur when plosive words such as P, T, K, B, D, G, and other letters such as S and Z are pronounced. Not softening these letters 
can sound can result in an unpleasant listening experience for your audience, which will distract them from the content of your podcast. Another accessory to consider, while not strictly microphone oriented, is a good set of headphones. Headphones are important because they will allow you to independently judge the quality of the sound you are producing. When you listen to a recording of your podcast played back through quality headphones, you are experiencing what your listeners will hear. This gives you the opportunity to correct any annoying and distracting mistakes that have slipped through under the radar and give audience the top-notch quality that they deserve. Because you may not be at your computer when you need to record a podcast, there are more than one piece of hardware that you may consider. A digital-handed recorder gives you the freedom to record your podcast no matter where you might be. A recorder breaks the tether connecting you to your PC and can become an invaluable tool while you're traveling. Given that consistency is one of the keys to building a podcast audience, this is one tool that you might want to seriously consider. You're going to want to touch up your recordings and make them as professional as possible. One of the best recording and editing software out there is Camtasia. This is a flexible and adaptable platform for podcasting that allows you to record and edit your podcast in one place and in one piece. While designed primarily for video, and video does have a place in podcasting, Camtasia offers multiple audio correction and editing options. That is because even if there is no video to accompany the audio track, the Camtasia options work nonetheless. You can easily edit out pauses, ums, and mispronunciations and edit in an additional material as you see fit. Another recording and editing option is Apple's GarageBand if, and this is a big if, you use a Mac. And if you do, you'll find that GarageBand is possibly the most powerful audio editing and recording software available. Although designed to edit and record music directly on your computer, GarageBand works equally well with the spoken word. The recording process hooks up with the microphone effortlessly, and the editing process is painless and intuitive. If you're using a Mac, it's definitely worth checking out. There's a final piece of software you might want to consider. Audio files tend to be big, especially if they're combined with any type of visual medium. You're not intending on producing a single podcast. Eventually, you'll have dozens of them, and you're going to need some place to store them. I use archive.org because it is free, and you can store any bit of information you want on it for free. By following these simple steps, you'll have a tremendous podcast put together in no time. Let's take a look at what you need to do. Planning your podcast. Before you open your mouth to speak, it's always good to know what you want to say. Nowhere is this truer than podcasting. After all, the purpose of a podcast is to allow an average person, just like you, to be able to broadcast the equivalent of a professional radio or television show right from your own house. Because of this, it pays to treat your podcast with the same level of attention and care that a radio or television producer or performer brings on their show. One of the most essential steps that a producer or performer takes prior to a show's podcast is planning what the show will be about. This means that your first step to a successful podcast is planning what your show will be about. Planning is all about making decisions, and it's not as hard or intimidating as it may appear. As this is your first podcast, an initial decision to make is how long your podcast is going to be. When making this decision, keep in mind that your listeners are used to consistency when it comes to broadcasts. One of the main elements of consistency is length. In other words, their favorite TV show is 30 minutes long. It isn't 15 minutes one day and two hours the next. It's always consistently 30 minutes long. So decide on a length that makes sense to you and that will make sense for your audience. Your next planning decision is frequency. How often are you going to produce and release a podcast episode? Again, consistency is important to your audience. Pick a frequency length that you can meet and stick to it. 
Avoid being overly ambitious. If you tell your audience that you're going to be broadcasting daily and then fail fail to do so because of other commitments, you're going to lose your audience. Now it's time to decide on your topic. If you're interested in podcasting, you must have plenty to say. Now is the time to say it. Remember that each show can have a theme and you can build topics around that theme. Also remember that several shorter topics can keep your audience's attention focused on what's coming up next. That's not to say that one long topic is out of question. It all depends on what you're planning to talk about. It's important that you make your podcast feel familiar to your listeners' ears. If you make your show sound like things that they are used to hearing, then you'll capture their interest that much quicker. The next step in preparing for your first podcast is outlining. An outline is essential if you want to provide structure to your show. In fact, you can say that an outline is the backbone of your production. It will give your podcast logical flow. It will allow you to block out the segments of your show that you fit everything into the time length you've already decided upon. It will also provide you with a handy script that will remind you what you're talking about and what comes next. The first step in producing an outline is performing something commonly called as a brain dump. A brain dump is not as extreme as it sounds. It's simply a way for you to get all of your ideas and topics for your podcast out of your head and onto paper or screen. There doesn't have to be any logical or chronological order to these ideas and topics. The goal is just to set everything down, take your time, think about what you want to say and where you want the podcast to go. Once you've completed the brain dump, it's time to organize all of these ideas and topics that you come up with. This is the time to be logical and chronological. You want to think about organizing your ideas and topics in the same way a mason builds a wall. Each topic should support the next. If you approach organizing the outline in this way, your podcast will have a natural flow that your audience will find attractive. A typical completed podcast outline will look something like this. Number one, intro music or jingle for around five to 10 seconds. An introduction, introduce yourself, welcome the audience to the podcast and discuss the content of the show. Topic number one, topic number two, a little musical break in between and you can also have your sponsors topic number three topic number four conclusion thank the audience for listening let them know when the next podcast will be available and tease the content for the next podcast episode outro music and end the show keep in mind that this is simply a sample outline Your podcast can and will take a different structure depending on your subject, its content, and your personality. The point to take away is that it is the outlining process itself that gives the podcast its structure and organization. You've probably heard the saying that practice makes perfect. Well, if you want your podcast to be as close to perfect as possible, you're going to need to practice your delivery. After all, all of the radio and television shows that you've ever heard or watched utilizes hour of practice and run through prior to going live or into production. If it works for the professionals, it's going to work for you. When you begin practicing for your podcast, the outline you produce in the previous step is going to become your best friend. You need to rely on that outline to guide you where to start, where to go next, and where you end up. It's a little bit like a roadmap for your podcast. In that sense, if you use it correctly, you'll prevent yourself from getting lost during the run through and during the actual recording of the podcast. In order to successfully practice for your podcast, you're going to have to replicate these conditions that will exist when you go to tape on your podcast. This means that you need to sit where you will be sitting when you record your show, 
Make sure that you're comfortable and relaxed. Provide yourself with a glass of water or another beverage of your choice. Set up your hardware and make sure that it's working properly. Make sure that you understand how to operate it correctly. Have any note that you've made on your topics near at hand. Also make sure that you have a stopwatch or are keeping track of time with the second hand available. You'll need it in order to keep your segment lengths or near the times that you've laid out in your outline. When everything is set up and ready, take a deep breath and begin your run through. As you're practicing, remember that this is time to make mistakes, discover where the rough spots and what segments need work. It's a shakedown cruise for your podcast. It's not going to be perfect, so concentrate on getting a rhythm for your delivery that makes sense to you. Keep an eye on a clock and work naturally through your outline. If you feel comfortable after your first run through, that's great. If not, set up another one and remember that practice really does make perfect. Performing your podcast. Once you've perfected your podcast through practice, it's time for the show. This is the moment you've been waiting for, the moment you've prepared for. It's time to do this and do it right. Notice that the title of the section is performing your podcast. The word performing is intentional. When you become a podcaster, you automatically also become a performer. Your role in the process is to entertain, engage, educate your audience. You can only accomplish this if you assume the role of larger than life personality. Your audience expects this of you. If you don't deliver, They won't stay around for the next episode. Speaking of delivery, your delivery at this point becomes important. Delivery refers to speaking style that you will use during your podcast. While there are many different types of styles, there is no particular style of delivery that is right for your podcast. The style that you use will depend on your personality and your subject matter. However, a general knowledge of your delivery styles will help you decide which direction is right for your podcast. In general, there are two major delivery styles, scripted and unscripted or free form. Neither one is better or preferable to the other. Whether they are appropriate to use depending entirely on the content that is being delivered. For example, a serious news item or documentary type topic lends itself to being scripted. On the other hand, less serious subjects as well as an interview lend themselves to be more freeform approach. For your first podcast, you're free to adapt the delivery style that makes you most comfortable. However, no matter the style, remember to use your outline as a guide. Have you ever wondered A speaker like a politician giving a speech or a lawyer delivering a closing argument remembers what the hell to say and what they need to say when to say it. They use an outline just like yours as talking points. Each item in the outline becomes a subject that they touch upon if they happen to be wandering off topic or forget what's next. The outline brings them back on track and into focus. Learn to rely on your own outline in the same way and you can't go wrong. Finally, when you're performing your podcast, remember to breathe. That's not a joke. Natural, non-nervous breathing allows you to formulate thoughts quickly and deliver your content in a natural and fixed manner. Conduct your podcast as if it were a conversation with a friend. Relax, let your mind open, and breathe. Once you've performed your podcast and have recorded it, you need to release it to your audience. However, before you do so, you need to check your recording to make sure what you've produced is as clean as professional as it can be. Wearing headphones, replay your podcast, even though you already know every word, sit back and listen carefully. Put yourself into the heads of your audience. Listen like you're a potential audience member and subscriber. Do you like what you hear? Are the volume levels comfortable? Does the podcast flow naturally from one topic to the next? Are you entertained and engaged? Have you learned anything? These are all important questions, so don't fool yourself about the answers that you come up with. If you're not satisfied with one point or another, your audience won't be either. 
If some things need to be polished, now's the time to do so. When you've completed any editing, the next step is to getting your podcast to the public. First thing, you need an RSS feed. RSS feeds stand for really simple syndication. When you have an RSS feed for your podcast, anyone who finds your first podcast and like it can subscribe to your RSS feed. This means that every new podcast that you produce will automatically be downloaded to their preferred device. They get your new content exactly the same way that they would get a new issue of a magazine that they subscribe to, except this is all done electronically. You can generate your own RSS feed, simply Google RSS feed, but an easier solution is to use a blogging podcast platform such as WordPress or TypePad. These platforms will automatically generate a RSS feed for your podcast, and in addition, they will host each of your podcast episodes so that any new audience members you acquire can obtain them as well. Once you have an RSS feed, you need to publish the podcast. The best place to do so is on iTunes. After all, it was Apple's hardware that, to be certain extent, started podcast revolutions. You simply go to the iTunes store, and once you select the tab entitled Podcasts, from the left-hand side of the menu, next select Submit a Podcast. From the same left-hand menu, enter the URL of your podcast feed and follow the simple instructions that follow. Within minutes, your first podcast will be available on iTunes for the entire world to see and enjoy. Podcast marketing is important simply because if you don't construct your podcast for the market you are trying to reach, that market won't listen to what you have to say. You're interested in podcasting precisely because you want your audience to hear what you have to say. Bad marketing practices prevent this from happening. One of the first and most important marketing practices is to know your audience. Who are the people you are trying to reach? What are their demographics? What are they interested in? How do you know that they'll be interested in your products, your performances, or hobbies? The best way to get to know your audience is by communicating with them. Don't be afraid to elicit feedback from the people who subscribe to your podcast feed. Ask them questions, ask for reviews, listen to what they have to say. When you connect with your audience in this way, you get to know what they like, what they don't like, and can tailor your content accordingly. What brings us to the next practice pointer, never forget that content is still king. Even in a world of podcasting, if you want your podcast to be popular, if you want to grow an engaged audience, don't deliver lazy, thrown together content. Remember that you are, in essence, a performer. How would you feel if you attended a concert and the band was out of tune and sloppy because they hadn't bothered to practice? How about a play that was poorly rehearsed? How about a restaurant where the chef didn't pay attention to detail? Would you feel cheated? Of course you would. Don't do the same to your audience. Give them the best content that you can produce and they will reward you with their continued attention and interest in what you have to say. Finally, when producing your podcast, remember that less is often more. Once you get into podcasting, the temptation to add more effects use more gadgets, and make the shows themselves longer, longer doesn't always equal better. More is sometimes simply too much. So restrain yourself when it comes to production. Lean and sleek is always better than fat and bloated. Now it's time for you to roll up your sleeves and get to work. There's no doubt that your first podcast episode will be a solid success. Just keep with the consistency, work your tail off, and you should be successful.